Hey everyone, Coach K here. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between a centralized and decentralized system. Now, we'll touch on a few key points and really ask the question about why we should even care. Let's get cracking. Fat Kittle, Fat Fat Kittle. Hey, welcome everybody. It's Coach K, and today we're going to talk about centralized and decentralized systems as you can see in a centralized system there is one person one government one bank one central bank one authority overlooking the others that go back to that authority and then they put their stuff on a ledger saying that yes this is what actually happened that day that type of system is what we currently have now decentralized system is like let's not just make that one person you know store all the data Let's all store all the data. So instead of having just one central authority, we can set up what we call nodes and have many different computers confirming transactions and saying, yes, these things are real. And it's a trustless way of doing it. Um, and I'll tell you guys at the end of the, of the episode why people want these types of trustless systems. So centralized as it looks, banks will go to the clearinghouse. They'll put it on a ledger. Obviously, someone could go in and hack and change things and do things like that. It's happened before. Um, so that's the problem with a centralized database is, is one person can go in there and ruin it. Whereas on a decentralized distributed network, now many different nodes confirm transactions. So if one person tries to go in and say, yeah, I didn't change this transaction, the other computers in the network will say, no, that's not real and won't let it happen. Right. So that is why uh, people really like this idea, because uh, you also can see on distributed ledger technology, you can go and actually look at the blockchain and see where money goes. So where does the bank money go? Where do they invest your money? Where is everything at at one point? This is probably why banks don't like it because they don't want us to know all these things, but they'll probably do private blockchains within their house. So here is just another example. So the current system, what it looks like is calculated at the end in the central, whereas why not have all the banks in the network be connected to a decentralized system and all those different banks all confirm all the transactions and then it's guaranteed settlement quickly too. So there's less uh, time wasted waiting for transactions and money to flow. So benefits for using blockchain distributed uh, technology, decentralized networks, voting. So as we've seen in the US elections, time and time again, in other elections around the world, time and time again, people say they're rigged, they're unfair. Why? Because they're centralized. Someone has to count the votes. And those people, we don't know if they're paid off. But if we did voting on a blockchain, for example, we would actually be able to know what person did it because they had their KYC done, where they voted from, if they're a real person, all that stuff will be guaranteed. And then they'll go and vote on the blockchain and no one can change that vote. So it's impossible for anyone to cheat. This is a really good use case that they could start using right now. And it's something they could implement. And I think uh, there's already countries like Sierra Leone who did this. And there'll be more and more countries because it just increases the amount of trust people have. Obviously, that's really important to people in this day and age. Getting to, to why centralized systems are bad, Deutsche Bank recently had uh, been fined $205 million US because they did manipulation in the Forex market. Now, you're probably going, wow, that's really bad. Actually, these guys just recently got put in jail, I think, for seven years for all this. Um, but that's not the, the craziest part. How often do you think banks have done this? And think about this. They've been charged for money laundering and all different types of uh, things like in, uh, violating embargoes recently in Cuba. Um, lots of different ways that they've broken uh, packs and things and, you know, gone against the rules. So the question we have to ask is, you know, are banks doing it better with a centralized system? Because a lot of the time they're not getting caught till it's way too late. Or would it be better to have this on a blockchain and we could find out, hey, these guys actually, you know, they're not doing the right thing and we should stop you from doing that right away. We could have actual systems and AI put in place to stop that. And that would be, uh, you know, a great thing because then banks are held accountable and there's transparency. People can trust the actual banks. And when we move out of cash into crypto, some of these banks are going to have to stay around because who wants to carry a million dollars of crypto in their pocket in a treasure? Nobody. It's very dangerous. You get robbed very easily. They'll put a gun in your head, transfer the money, transfer to your address to mine. 
There's nothing you can do. So I believe banks will still have a future, but uh, they'll need to have blockchains and integrate this technology or they'll die. And now here's another example of this. So from 2008 to 2017, the Bank of America, America paid in billions of dollars, almost $60 billion in fines. JP Morgan Chase, 26 billion, I believe it was. Citigroup, RBS, Deutsche Bank, look at the amounts of billions of dollars in fines. These are from them doing things that are technically illegal in the markets and manipulating them and uh, violating different embargoes and doing things like that. So if you really look at that number, it's immense. The actual number combined is more than, than some of the crypto's market caps for most coins. So that's the stuff that people want decentralized networks for because of all these things in the past. That's why a decentralized system could be much better for us in the long term as long as we have the right networks of nodes set up so we can confirm transactions and that they can't get hacked by bad actors. So yeah, that's a decentralized and a centralized system. That's how they're different. This is the benefits that we could see and will have over time. Now go tell me what is a decentralized and centralized system. Fat kiddle, fat, fat kiddle, fat kiddle, huge fat kiddle.